They are our best friends. They are the ones that we will always be able to confide with. They never judge us, and they're always and always honest. These are the pets that we have, and in particular, in today's episode, I will be painting a portrait of Lincoln sent to me by Madison's Fine Art. Now, this photograph was sent to me uh, through my uh, website, so if you're interested in having a picture of your pet or any wildlife photography that you have and you would like me to uh, create a painting of it, please feel free to share your images with me on my Instagram account, my Facebook, or my website. And so uh, thanks again, Madison, for sending me this photograph. It's a wonderful photograph. And so in today's painting, what we have already going on here is a very simple uh, compositional sketch. So what I'm trying to do is basically think on canvas. And remember, I try to think of every day as a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities, and that's what we're going to be exploring today. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking of the placement, a very general placement of our model's head on the canvas and this will actually be the first I think the first time you ever see me paint any kind of uh, you know person or uh, image outdoors uh, the photograph is extremely well taken so I think that um, Madison probably has like a very like I don't know like a another DSLR or, I don't know uh, the coloring is really good in this picture so uh, as you saw in the intro to this video I will be putting in uh, definitely the sky color. So you'll definitely see me mix up that sky color later on. So the block in is very simple. We just have an idea of where the corner furthest to the right is going to fit. So I did move it a little bit uh, and then to the left, the top, and then the bottom. And here we have a simple axis mark for the uh, the eyes. So for Lincoln's eyes. And I'm just using regular burnt umber diluted with a little bit of the water and if you're new to this channel or maybe you haven't been watching my episodes for i don't know a, a, a week or two weeks i don't know how long it's been but i've been using water mixable oil paints and um i think i'm going to continue using them for a while um you know i never say never i'm definitely going to return to using traditional oil paints at some point in the future, it's just, you know me, right? I, I hope. <laughs> you know that I like to explore different techniques. You know that I like to, um, you know, change things up. So I am working with water mixable oil paints. And if you would like to know exactly what materials I'm using, uh, you can always feel free to scroll down to the description box down below, and I'll have all that information typed up for you. But I can assure you I'm just using Burnt Umber to draw. And the majority of my uh, paints are of the Winsor & Newton uh, water mixable brand. And for no particular reason, it's just that they're the ones that were readily available to me at um, the art store near my home. So, yeah, <laughs> there you have it. Um, a simple shape there for the, the bottom of the dog's mouth. And now I'm going to be using uh, some some simple straight lines and angles to figure out exactly where I want Lincoln's ear to fit. I like this pose in particular. Madison did send me a lot of uh, nice uh, images of the dog of, of Lincoln from several different angles, but I just really like this one because you can really tell that the dog is like staring into the distance, so Lincoln is staring into the distance in a very kind of I don't know hopeful and strong kind of look. Now I'm just working with simple straight lines, just trying to get a feeling for where the backside is going to, to fit. And I'm just thinning out the paint with water, like I mentioned before I started describing all my materials. So again, I'm not really using any medium. I'm just experimenting for the time being, just using water. The simplest kind of uh, materials you can come up with. And I think at this point I decided to crop uh, the torso 
off the corner of the canvas. For some reason, compositionally, I don't like when things meet the corner of any of the edges of the rectangle. That's why I extended um, the angle for Lincoln's back to not perfectly meet the corner of the bottom left edge of the canvas. And I think that's about it for the umber sketch. And now you see me mixing up a kind of bluish gray scale. So uh, just like I usually mix up that general color value web for flesh tones on uh, you know, portrait paintings of humans, I'm going to have the same kind of thing going on uh, with this portrait. So I decided to make this one a little bit more realistic today. You know how I tend to change things up a lot, but eh, this time I think I'll go a little more realistic. So a little bit of ivory black down in the bottom. Uh, so now we have a kind of warm gray, a warm gray uh, color, color value web. And now we're going to have a kind of a warm brown for the brownish colors on the spots. I really don't know what kind of dog this is. I didn't read that in the in the message. So if you know what kind of dog this is, or um, if you could comment down, uh, Madison, on what kind of uh, dog Lincoln is, that, that would be nice to know. Actually, I, I'm not too, uh, I don't know too much about dog breeds, but yeah. Anyway, uh, now we have a simple shape for just the darkest dark, and the darkest dark is uh, going to be a lizard and crimson ultramarine blue and ivory black. And we're going to start off with the darkest dark first. And I am applying a little bit of a thinner mixture for these preliminary layers. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, what we're going to do is subdivide a lot of the shapes for the focal point of this image, the focal point of this painting, which is um, Lincoln's head, ear, and his nose. So we're going to focus quite a lot in this one area. And um, I think that the lighting is rather, uh, I don't know, I think it's afternoon light or something like that. So that's why I went with the darkest dark first, because I know just underneath of the ear is the shadow. So that's the area that I want to be the darkest. The value range is going to be fairly broad in this painting. So I just wanted to make sure to nail the darkest dark first. And now we're working with simple masses. And that's how we're going to be sculpting out uh, the shapes. And remember, even though I'm going to be creating what I call a realistic picture, that does not mean photorealistic picture. It doesn't mean photorealistic painting. The photograph, I'm pretty sure, does uh, Lincoln justice. Let the photograph be the photograph. And we're going to let the painting be a painting. So that is, we're going to now subdivide these shapes into smaller and smaller shapes and looking at each shape and how it relates to its uh, neighboring shape. So uh, for instance, this spot right here is darker, right? Darker relative to the white patch on the left. Uh, so I'm going to definitely uh, leave the white of the canvas for the white patch and then I'll come back in uh, and put in some of the titanium white and maybe a little bit of cobalt blue to fill in the light patch. And now notice I used kind of a warm gray uh, for the dog's ear, for Lincoln's ear. I think that, um, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to be adding a little bit more ultramarine blue just because I, I don't want to get too much of a warm color because there are a lot of nice kind of bluish kind of grays that we're seeing in this color scheme. And each shape is being analyzed, um, you know, not to a mathematical extent, but just kind of by observing. We're making these decisions by eye. And I think that's a lot of fun to be able to, to paint in this kind of way, not having to worry about any kind of careful measuring or anything like that. Just interpreting shapes of color and shapes of value. And already, or it hasn't even been like 10 minutes, already we now kind of have the uh, image starting to emerge. So now already with all of these shapes that we've put in, uh, we already have a pretty good understanding of where we're going to be moving uh, in the direction we're going to be going in this painting. 
and we're just throwing a little more of the darker dark. Uh, I did leave a separate puddle on the palette for the darkest dark because I knew that I'd be mixing a lot of the kind of middle dark grays, but I wanted to leave room on the palette to have something that's the darkest mixture that I can have. And there you see me putting in some more of the dark accents. And now it's going to be just a matter of uh, subdividing these small shapes into even smaller shapes and then adjusting them accordingly. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we are just about at the halfway point in today's episode. So you can tell a lot of the time is being spent on the main focal point. So the main focal point, um, you know, being Lincoln's head, his nose, mouth, and his ears. I particularly like the ears and the angle and the shape that they make. Almost kind of reminds me of those chips, the Dorito chips. Starting to get hungry. <laughs> um, even though I haven't eaten Doritos in like forever. But that's kind of the, the shape that I get for the uh, for Lincoln's ears. And I mean that in the best possible way. Okay, um, So now I'm mixing up that titanium white and cobalt blue mixture that I was talking about before. So remember, I left the white of the canvas for the, uh, the white patch on the... Uh, on Lincoln's head and just with the titanium white and cobalt blue that's all I used uh, for those light mixtures and um, I'm using I'm painting on white these days as opposed to a tone canvas just because I want the uh, the chroma of the colors that I'm using to be as strong as they can be I find that water mixable oils I think have a little less intensity to their pigment and I can only speak for the Winsor Newton and again I only have two tubes of Holbein Aqua Duo uh, so I can only speak for the Winsor Newton water mixables and uh, basically Burnt Sienna and Alizarin Crimson with the Holbein Aqua Duos but that's actually what I'm using right there for the darkest dark. I tend to sneak in a little bit of warmth for the nose for the snout uh, for the dogs and for humans actually <laughs> for the uh i never thought i would say the word human like now i have to specify human with portrait see this vertical gesture so this is kind of how i use comparative measurement so i kind of just move the brush back and forth to get kind of a feel for where a certain shape needs to fit and now that's basically the burnt sienna alizarin crimson and the uh, mixing white that i'm using it looks kind of interesting to put in those spots for the uh, for the iris without the pupil, but don't worry, we're going to put the shape for the pupil and the highlight in pretty soon. So just working with these general shapes, and you can you can literally see how you know I'm able to layer really really nicely. And I tend to sound like a broken record these days, just because I'm always amazed at how easily I can layer wet on wet with water mixables it's a very it's a very pleasant experience to be able to layer so so easily that is the paint just grips onto the surface very nicely and now I think it's time to throw in a little bit of a highlight right there on the corner of the pupil and now you can see we've softened some more of the edges. I did take the photo reference out in this shot just because I, I think of it more of as a cinematic shot. So I just want you to see how I'm going to be uh, finishing certain areas, so to speak. So we're finishing that area by the ear. So after all of the smaller shapes are all said and done, it really comes time to finessing the edges. Uh, not only the edges for the outside shape of the uh, images or the image, sorry, but also the form edges for the for particular shapes, right? So I'm making it softer to try to get the texture or the illusion of the fur. And now we're just going to scrape off a little segment here of the palette. See, that's why I like to work on glass because I can easily just scrape off the um, I can easily just scrape off the paint with the uh, with a razor or with a palette knife and it comes off really really easily 
In any case, now we're mixing up that sky blue color that I said I would be mixing up. So I'm using a little bit or a lot of the uh, cobalt blue and the titanium white. But I did throw in a little bit of yellow into that color, and that's the sky blue. So now that we have the sky, and now that we have the, uh, the texture for the trees, now we're going to start to get into the... Uh, the fur. I didn't really want to spend too much time on the background. The background is going to be, uh, you know, just a couple values like you saw me put in there. But the majority of the footage is going to be focused on Lincoln, the dog that we are painting. And in particular, Madison uh, said something in her email about the uh, about the fur. So I'm going to uh, show some more footage of how do I paint the fur. So this is how I'm going to be starting off the, the fur. So that's the largest brush that I have. And the first thing for me is to establish my darks. To get the darkest darks, and even here I'm going to throw in a little brush stroke for the darkest darks. And I'm going to be using my uh, the same layering approach that I used uh, for the focal point of this painting being Lincoln's head. I'm going to use the same tactic, meaning I'm going to be layering, but now you can see that mixture. I went right into the gray that I had the sky blue uh, and the gray that I had on the palette. And I have, I'm using a little bit of a warmer kind of violet color. It's like a violet brown color that I see. Um, I don't know, remember color is kind of interpretive, but what I'm trying to do is establish a thin layer. A thin layer of color working from the darks first and leaving the white of the canvas for me to come back in, uh, you know, with a, uh, a different brush. So I'm actually going to be using a different brush for the dark, a different brush for the light, and another brush for the, uh, the halftones. Very similar to how I would with the portrait, but in the end, you're going to see how I soften all of those shapes. To try to get the uh, the illusion of the fur, and I will say, I will say that um, I'm painting a little thicker with the lighter values. So with those lighter values, much more paint is being used in the mix because I know I'll be able to come back in with a uh, dry brush and just soften the edges to make to, to make it kind of look like the illusion of fur. So there we are, very simply just covering the masses. And try to sub we're trying to subdivide the shapes into no more than I don't know, maybe 20, <laughs> 20 that's a lot. Maybe like five different zones of values and then subdivide them into smaller and smaller values. But the trick here really is the uh, the brush stroke, the direction of it. Notice how it's following kind of the directional pattern of Lincoln's fur. And you can see kind of the paint starting to drip on the bottom, so that's okay. It just means that I might have used too much water there, but it's okay. We're going to soften out these edges ultimately. And now you're seeing the softening portion, so we're almost done with today's episode. So these are the close-ups of the fur. Hopefully this helps out. So all of those shapes that I put in before, I'm now I'm now just softening them. Okay, so I used dry brushes and um, some brushes with a little bit of the same color. So now we're putting in the whiskers. So thinning out the paint and just using something light from the palette, um, mostly just titanium white and a little bit of cobalt blue. And there you have it. Very simple and easy approach to um, painting the fur and the whiskers. So the last thing to do is to slap on a signature onto this painting and call it done. And I think I'm going to sign it with ultramarine blue um, just to, I don't know, just to be a little different today. So there we go. That being said, I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And always remember... In a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really do hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll be back again with the next episode tomorrow.